So Microsoft has really leveled up its game when it comes to presentations and keynotes, especially since their CEO Satya Nadella joined. I really like their style. Now, this is an example from 2024 from their Ignite conference, where he uses a really cool concept to show a very complex or a lot of information in a dynamic way. Let's have a look. Now here we see the different topics on the slide. Now that's not a real good trick, this is a nice overview, but as soon as he clicks one of the topics will enlarge and a video will start playing with more information while he's explaining the topic. Now he keeps talking through the topic and at the end it will fade away and the next block will pop up. And this way you can dive deeper into the topics while still keeping that overview available on the slide. And he's navigating from one point to the next, giving enough room to that certain topic. So I think it's a very dynamic way to show a complex topic in minimal but yet dynamic style. So perfect for keynotes or launches or webinars. Now in case you like these minimal style of presentations, I also have a lot of side text available that you can use and you can just drag in your content if you want and fill in the text that you need. Now this will save you a lot of time and effort in your presentations and you can buy them via the link in the description below. Now let's jump into PowerPoint and see how we can create this slide. So we're going into our point and we're starting from a blank slide. So I'm going to select the layout blank and here I want to add a shape first. So we're going to add a shape and drag it on the canvas. It doesn't have to be a rectangle, so I'm going to do it just like this. The roundness of the corners, I'm going to decrease it a little bit so it's not that much, but the corners are slightly rounded. Now he's not using any outline of this, so I'm going to do that away and give it a nice light gray fill. Position it in the center of the slide, and now we're going to type in the text. So the first case is facilitator agent. It's split on two lines, so I'm going to add a break there. And for the font, I'll use a dark gray fill. So this block, I'm going to repeat it, maybe make it slightly smaller. I think this looks good. You can always select the box, press Ctrl or Command D to create a copy, and position it next to the previous one and then just press Command D two more times. Select them all and position them nicely in the middle. Now we're going to change the text. So this one was Project Manager. This one is Self Service Agent. And now we had SharePoint. I think there was maybe five, but we'll, I'll show it with four topics so you can expand it to as many as you like, basically. So this is already the different blocks. Now we're going to add the logos. And for that, I'm just gonna grab them from the internet with a transparent background, so make sure you have a PNG and add them to the slide. I'll position them in the center of each of these blocks, just like this. So we have the Planner, Copilot, and SharePoint. And there we go. I'm going to position this slightly downwards and add a text box on top, because there was a title on the opening slide, which is Agents in Microsoft 365. Select text and center it in the middle. For the font, I'm using the standard Aptos fonts. I think there's a good chance that they're using this one in their presentations, since it's the standard Microsoft font. Arrange, align, and align the center. Maybe a bit larger, and push it down just a little bit, so we have a room on top for that opening remark. It was announcing, and also here, we're going to remove the outline, and give this a gradient fill, form and shape, fill, gradient fill, only two stops, where we have that green color. I'm not sure if it's this one, so I'm going to go for a green color that resembles it, like this, direction from left to right, and then end with a clear blue on the other side. Increase the roundness of the corner just a little bit, and then scale it down. And then also center it in the middle of your slide. And I think this already comes pretty close to the opening slide result that they had. I'll do the animation at the end of this one. So the fade in animation, you'll see in a second while I'll do that. So that's the opening slide. Now let's look at the expanding slides. So we're going to duplicate this page, Control D or Command D, and I'm going to remove those two things since we don't longer need it on the next slides. Now just to have a backup ready, I always like to make duplicate again. So you have this standard one to work with. I'm going to select all the topics and drag them to the left. So we have two topics in screen, the facilitator and the project manager. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the size of the box. So I hold the control key. So I expand it nicely to both sides and then expand it like this. Again, it depends a bit on the style that you want to create, how large you want to make those boxes. I'll go for somewhere in the middle, something like this. And then just to repeat, you can 
scale everything a bit more if you want. You don't have to. You can increase the font size if you want. There we go. Now we're going to start with the base version. So I'll teach you how to make all the blocks larger, do the animations on that, and then we're going to add the content. So I'm going to duplicate this slide. And here I'm going to make this smaller again until it meets that border. And then make sure it's the same width. For the font, this was 18. So I'm going to put this again on 18. And also make this one smaller again. Now we're going to select everything. So I'm scrolling backwards. And we put the next one in screen. The first one, we're going to drag it all the way to the left. And then we're going to increase this one. Hold the control key to expand it evenly on both sides. And then place this. Don't copy, just drag it to the middle and expand it. Same with the text box. Put it on 24. There we go. So this is the second one. Let's duplicate. We reduce it again. Same thing on the width. Put it on 18 again. And also reduce the logo. Select everything. Drag it to the side. So the last one pops in. This one can go out. If you don't like that border, you can drag it all the way out. And put it a bit further apart. And we're going to repeat. Make this one larger. The copilot icon. Also increase it in size. And two ticks larger. And then a the final time. Now here we can see the alignment might not be perfect, so you can always make it slightly smaller and have that. You can work with grids if you want. It's not necessary, but I think if you eyeball it for this type of thing, it will be good. So let's do it like this. We make this one smaller. Oops, don't forget to hold the control key so that it scales from both sides. Make it as large. It's useful to have these guides set up that will give you an indication of how large the topic should be. And just like this, we do the last one. But also here, we increase it, same with the font. And then let's drag it to the side so it's nicely positioned in the middle and everything is sort of at the same place. So if we now do this and we select all of the slides, we go to transitions and apply morph. Let's already play that through from the start. So we have the overview. As soon as we now click, the first one will enlarge. Everything else will shift to the side. Click again, the next part will pop up and you just continue through the cycle. So this already is quite a cool effect. Now we're going to look at how we can add that animation plane and also the fade animation, of course, from the start. So for that, we're going to go to this slide again and we're going to add, let's position in the middle, and we're going to add a video on top of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag a video in. I just got one of the Office 365 or the Copilot videos. So I'm going to position it on the box, crop, and make sure that the crop marks, the outline, meets the border of the shape that we've created so that we fill it entirely. Now, of course, this doesn't have rounded corners, so let's do that in a second. So we're going to video format, crop, video shape, and then add rounded corners. And here we have this handle and we can just drag it until we have that same curvature and that's what we want now we have that video on top as a layer so the original information is still below it we need to make sure that we animate it correctly so we select the video and we go to animations and here we want to select play since we don't want it to start playing automatically let's open the animation pane so we have this play animation but we also want it to appear so we select the video and go to effects and let's do a fade animation. Of course, this has to happen before the play, so we'll put that first. And let's say we want to have that happen on a click. The play can start with previous, so as soon as you click, or after, depending on how you want it. And then, of course, we have to have a fade out animation for the end. So we select the video again, go to exit effects, and we have a fade out. This can happen after the previous. So after previous, after that play is completed. So let's already see what that looks like if we put this on full screen. So the opening slide, as soon as we zoom to the first part, it stays there until you click, puts you in control and the video will fade in and start playing. If this is too fast, you can always reduce it, the speed of course. So let's look at that effect options and let's put it on full screen. Duration to maybe two seconds before it starts playing. 
I now put a very short video of a few seconds as an example. You can of course take any video that you want. If you want to trim it, you can do it like this and make it slightly longer. So this is now the first example of the slide. Now the cool trick is that you can copy and reuse a lot of the animations that we have created. So let's go to the next slide and I'll add a video in here. So let me copy that video in here and we just scale it down until it matches that box. Crop it and there we go. And if we now go to this, this one, the original one that we have edited, we press Control Shift C to copy the formatting and we Control Shift V or Command Shift V, we copy the exact same things. So we copy the roundness of the corner and that's what we want. Now for the animations, the same thing happens. So if you select the original video, go to animations, animation painter, so those three, go to the next slide and paste them on here. You'll see they happen exactly as we did on the previous one. So that's pretty cool. You can repeat that step for the others. So I'm just going to paste it on here and let's crop it so that it perfectly matches. Of course, you'll do this with your own content, but for this example, I'm just going to use the video that I had available. There we go. Now let's already play that through, see if that works. And here we have the opening slide. As soon as we click, we get the first topic. Click again, the video will start playing, which is pretty neat. And then it can run for the duration of that video. And once it's done, it will fade out again. You can click, move to the next slide, and on your control, you can click and start the next animation. You can still see the previous and the next topic on the slide, which is pretty cool effect. And then you just rotate through the entire presentation on your own speed, at your own demand. If you're talking, you can just be the guide throughout the presentation, which is a pretty nice effect. And you just repeat that for the end of the presentation. Now, to have some consistency in the presentation, I think it's good that we have the closing slide all the way at the bottom as well, or the opening slide all the way at the bottom. This will make a nice loop and you can end with that overview. Now as a final thing to do, we need to animate that opening slide. I didn't do it because otherwise the animations would be on all of the other pages and I don't want it to fade in every single time. So I'm going to select those and I'm going to add a fade in or let's do a float in animation. Let's do that. Let's see if we can select them all and do float in. That looks quite good and float in for those as well. It can all happen with previous. And of course, if you want to have a delay on one of those, you can easily do that. But for this tutorial, I won't go into that much detail. So let's preview the entire presentation. And this is how you can make this really nice slide from Microsoft, where as soon as you click, you open up one of the different parts and a video will start playing on your control on your clicks. And then as soon as you are finished, the video will fade out again and you can just click and move through the next one. You can just start playing the animations. You can track through it on your keynote, on your presentation, your webinar, whatever it is, and give some explanation, some in-depth explanation of the different topics, which I think is a really cool and dynamic way. So I think looking back at it, we have come to a pretty close result of the Microsoft slides in the recreation and it really puts you in control as a presenter. If you want to save a lot of time and effort while making slides, I also have a lot of templates available that you can download via the link in the description below. So if you want to save some time and effort, have a look there. Thanks a lot for watching. If you want to learn more about PowerPoint, make sure to watch the video on the screen right now.